Welcome back here, WHIP Radio in Philadelphia, as we're getting you ready for the games coming up this weekend as the NCAA tournament does invade Philadelphia. Now joining us is ESPN's very own, a good friend of the show, and that is Seth Greenberg. Coach, it's Zach Gelb here in Philly. Thanks for a few minutes, and how are you? Life is good. Anytime I can get on the phone on this big-time show, come on now. I'm going to turn this down. <laughs> I always appreciate it when Coach is nice to us. But I'll tell you this. I actually was motivated by the NCAA tournament, and I went out there and played a basketball game in the morning. By the way, Coach, I uh, spent all 40 minutes on the court. And then I went home, and I put my butt in a chair and didn't move from 1230 until after the St. Joe's game, and that was some of the best basketball I've ever seen. Those games yesterday were just sensational. They were terrific. And you know you know what the funny thing is, and I've been saying this for the last few days, we all get caught up in our brackets. but And we've seen these uh, incredibly memorable moments. But, you know, for every one shining moment, there's another team. And, uh, you know, seeing what some of these kids have gone through, coaches, players alike, uh, you know, really is just, it's been incredible. You know, one game has been more incredible than the next. And yesterday, you know, basically set it to another level. Was that the greatest four days of college basketball in the NCAA tournament? I, you know, look, I don't know every, every, you know, game that's ever been played. It was a, a magical weekend with terrific games. And I've said all along, and the Villanova fans lose their minds, but I know you Temple guys will appreciate this. Look, we don't have a great team in college basketball. We're having great games. We're having memorable moments. And that might be better than having a great team. Uh, but we're having teams that are playing great. We're having teams that are making plays. We're having unbelievably memorable finishes. But I'm not sure we have a great team. And... Uh, but it's been it's been a blast in every single game. I mean, you, you can't you can't walk away for a second. I mean, it's been that good. And the thing I couldn't believe yesterday, and the whole country couldn't believe it, is Northern Iowa's up 10, 30 seconds to go, and they oh, don't right. find a way to win the game. As a coach, what do you say after your team in a loss like that? Because I don't know how the Northern Iowa coach did it. You know, you told you see how proud you are. I mean, you're not. You, look, you don't have another game to coach. You don't have another lesson to teach at that point. As a coach, you need to be a leader at that point. You need to let your guys, especially when you have seniors, know how much you love them, how much you care about them, how much you appreciate how hard they've worked and how proud you are of them. Uh, and that to hold your head up high because you know you've done some great, memorable things this year, and uh, you know you're you should feel. Don't define yourself by those last thirty seconds. Define yourself by your body of work. And you're exactly right when you say that there really is no great team because this field is so wide open. Just look at Michigan State going down in the first round, and everyone thought Michigan State was probably going to get to the Final Four. I had them in my championship game and winning it all just because of the great respect I have for a coach like Tom Izzo. But out of everyone that remains in the Sweet 16, who do you think the best team is right now? Yeah, my gut feeling is Kansas or Carolina. I mean, that's just my gut. Um... I could be wrong, <laughs> but that's my gut. Kansas, uh, because they're so connected defensively and they have a lot of different guys that can step on it, up on any given night. And Carolina, because they're starting to shoot the ball better, and they've really defended at a high level uh, right now. So I, I would say those two, two teams would have separated themselves a little bit. Seth Greenberg joins us right now from ESPN. This is WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. Coach, let's get to that Temple game that was on Friday night. I was just talking to Coach Fran Dumphy, and yes, obviously every basketball game, you can't just single out one play for a reason why a team loses, but you take a look at the officiating at the end of the game. How did the refs just miss that push-off on Woodbury? They missed calls all throughout the game. I mean, it was, you know, they're following the fly of the ball. They're wondering about if the shot was off in time. The baseline ref, you know, probably just missed it. I mean, and, and, you know, look, refs are no different than players and coaches. They all make mistakes. They're just, we get a chance to look at it a second time, and uh, and they don't. And uh, it's not a reviewable error. I'm sure they did not do it on purpose. They weren't rooting for Iowa. Uh, it's hard to handle as a coach. It's hard to handle as a player. But, I'm you know, Again, I, I don't look at any maliciousness in, in 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 the manner in which you know the officials made the call. I mean, it's just it's a hard call to miss, though, and something that knowing the officials the way I do uh, will haunt but that crew for a while. 
And you take a look at that Temple team all year long. They lived and died off the three-point shot, and they couldn't ever get that three-point shot going. And really late in that game, Anetchionia had an open look in the corner, and it just rimmed in and out. Was it just the night the shots weren't falling, or did you see anything else to say why Temple wasn't shooting the ball well from three? I haven't been around their team enough to make that to make the statement. Franny would obviously be able to answer that a lot easier than I can. Let's. It took an air ball to beat him. I mean, that was like you know, Mike Gazelle was over, and he went all Derek Willi- uh, Wittenberg on us. Shot the air ball that got the push off, that got the layup. So, you know, this time of the year is a fine line, and uh, you know they're going to be making missed days. And, you know, that's why everyone says defense travels. And this was such a special year for Fran Dumphy. You take a look at what he did beating every team in the American Athletic Conference, and even Fran said it that when they were sitting at 4-5 and five on the year and they had some tough losses earlier in the season, if you gave him a piece of paper to sign for the NCAA tournament, you would be taking that in a second. How does Temple build off this season to move forward uh, with their basketball program? You know, I think that uh, they are moving forward. Fran's recruited well. I think he's got a good culture. We know he's got a good culture. We know he's a terrific teacher. Uh, you know, he'll develop his young players. Uh, Fran Dunphy has a PhD in not just coaching, but people. And he finds a way to get the best out of people. So, you know, when I, when I think of, the, you know, how does Temple move forward? They have a great leader, and uh, that leader has a plan, and that plan will be executed, and Temple will move forward and continue to be one of the elite teams in the American Conference and uh, and represent Temple the way they represent them. And, and they've been great for the bus company. I mean, for the, for the train, trains. I mean, the guys, you know, he, he should be like like a assistant director of mass transportation for uh for for the United States because the guy just he, – he, he travels every which way. I mean, planes, trains – and automobiles. And they took that subway. That's what Seth's alluding to. So let me ask you this. What's the weirdest way that you've ever traveled uh, with one of your teams? The weirdest way was uh, when I was at Long Beach State and we'd play UNLV. We would stay at the Alexis Park Hotel, which was right down the street from the Thomas and Mac. So we never took a, uh, we never rented cars or vans or took a bus. We literally uh, took cabs to the hotel, and then we took the hotel shuttle in groups of five uh, to get to the arena. So uh, my trainer and uh, and four of the starters went in the first bus, and we staggered them. I think it was every 12 minutes we were able to get another bus back and forth. So eventually we got the whole team there. Now, after the game, that became an issue. Because if you were on that last bus and you lost the game to Vegas, you were miserable. And I had to be on the last bus. And they forgot to come pick up my wife and myself. We ended up walking back to the hotel. Wait, wait, wait. How do they forget? A, how do they forget? It wasn't the, a great day. Uh, yeah, but, but still, Coach, how do they forget you and your wife? Uh, you're the leader of that basketball team. How do they forget you? Uh, that, that, that trainer has since been fired. <laughs> as uh, Seth Greenberg is here with us alright let's stay in the Big Five and move to the only team in the Big Five that's still playing and that is Villanova it looked like you saw a little bit of an extra motivated Villanova team uh, the other day just because of what everything has happened uh, in years past with some early exits in the tournament do you agree with that? I don't, you know every tournament's different this is a different group I think, I think Villanova played well because they're really good I think Villanova played well because they check in, they rebound, and they can play fast and they can play slow. I think Villanova's played well because they have a toughness about them. And you know, we we always talk about what happened in the past. You know, yes, you know, you know, to me that it's ridiculous. You know, yesterday's the past. You know, today's the present. Tomorrow's a mist. I mean, who cares about what happened in the past? This is a different group of guys. I mean, and they, this group of guys. They've got a really good team, and they've done it throughout the course of the season. They've got a hardness about them. They've got a great leader in in Archie Diacono. They, they, you know, Josh Hart is uh, as tough as nails. Jenkins is a tough matchup, and they guard you. I mean, that's just the reality. When you take a look at the matchup coming up next between Miami and Villanova, and there's so many good storylines here. I look at the coaching matchup to start with Jim Laranega and Jay Wright. I'm really excited for this one on Thursday. I know it's early in the week, but who do you lean towards if you had to make a prediction on Miami and Villanova? 
this is going to be a great game because Miami is really hard to play against. I just actually wrote something for ESPN.com. My, Miami plays the pack line defense. They're going to really, they're going to take away those driving lanes for, for Villanova. The question is, can Villanova turn Miami over because of the smaller backcourt? Go, uh, backcourt, can they rebound the basketball because they really, really get after it? Uh, you know, they, this team, Miami team, has a little bit of Xavier in them. And it's got a little bit of seat in the hole in them. Two teams that have given Villanova a little bit of a hard time. Uh, you know, I don't want to make a selection yet because I got to do it on one of our shows. But uh, but I would say that you know a couple things. Tempo will have a, a hand in this thing. I think that Villanova can play fast and slow. I think the ability to uh, keep Oshefu out of foul trouble will be very important. I also think Brunson's going to be a big key in this game if Nova's going to want to win. Well, Brunson's a big key every game. I mean, you know, it's not just his numbers. You know, he gives him another ball handler. He's active. He's got a toughness about him. He makes passes, and he plays off of, of Ryan. I mean, they just have a lot of guys that, 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 that play winning basketball. Brunson is a winning basketball player. I mean, you know, Jenkins has become just a terrifically tough matchup. He's kind of like the Draymond Green of uh, Villanova. Uh, Arch is playing with so much confidence and poise. And, uh, you know, Josh Hart has got a hard outer shell. Booth comes in and gives him athleticism. Ochefu gives him some inside pressures. Bridges has been very good for him. You know, through Ochefu's injuries, they've developed some depth, legitimate depth that's really helped them. We're spending a few more minutes with Seth Greenberg, who's kind enough to give us a few minutes right now. Uh, that St. Joe's game, I feel for Coach Martelli. Uh, we were pulling for him here at Temple University, and last night it just came down to a few possessions, Seth, and uh, Bembry, he, he didn't play his best at the end, but you know that team had a really good year this year in St. Joe's, Coach. Yeah, really good year, and you know, Phil has just done a great job, and and you know, you got to give Don to Julia credit for you know knowing that Phil is my coach, and I believe in him, and you know, you're going to have an ebb and flow, and you're not going to be you know in the elite eight or the NCAA tournament every year, but you're going to have a, a program that's respected, and Phil does a terrific guard a job. He does, he's got great guards, uh, which is so important. Uh, Bembry is such a tough matchup. Miles is a tough matchup, and they had a great year. They lost a team that I think is really good, a team that I have in my Final Four. Who, what's, what is your Final Four now? If you had to make your, your picks, who do you think is going it's to the Final Four? It's changing, dude. I mean, come on now. You, you, you're exposing me here. You're exposing me. Well, uh, Coach. I'm, I'm going to stay with Oregon. I'm going to stay with Kansas. I had those. I, I actually have that side of the bracket. I'm in pretty good shape. It's the other side that I've I've struggled with a little bit. Um, you know, I would. my gut feeling is Carolina. The bottom of that bracket is a mess. You know, it's an absolute, a- absolute mess. I mean, it is, it is a, it is a crap shoot to say the least. Uh, you know, I, I, I say Carolina, I, and yet part of me thinks Indiana does present some. You know, they both offensive rebound. They both obviously create matchup problems. You know, how is Bryce Johnson going to guard that four out offense? Tom will attack that matchup. Uh, but then how will, will Indiana, you know, run the floor with, with Carolina? You know, how does how does Colin Hartman keep Bryce Johnson or defend Bryce Johnson? Uh, I think that'll be a, an interesting thing. I, I think it would be poetic without making a choice. You know, I'm going to say Virginia, but without making a choice, how funny would it be if Syracuse got in the Final Four after what Coach Bayheim's been through this year? I think that would be the ultimate smack back to the NCAA. Do you think that he goes into his locker room? Because when everyone made Syracuse and they had that selection, everyone's saying, what's Syracuse doing in the tournament? Does he use that as bulletin board material, or do we just think too much is that as outsiders here? You guys think too much of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, that, you're an answer of a tournament. Forget about that. Let's play for us. The, we, don't, we don't need any extra uh, – any extra motivation? Let's play for us. I mean, let's play for. Hey, we earned it here. Now let's show people that we earned it. You know that we're good enough. But let's go play basketball. I mean, let's play at the level we're capable. Of playing. Let's play the way we played. We played against Texas A and M. Another Sweet Sixteen. I mean, we're a good team, and we're hard to play against because you can't simulate our defense. We got great guards. Let's go play. And I'm sure that's what he's saying. I'm really excited for uh, Friday and then, of course, Sunday because the tourney's coming here to Philadelphia on the way out here with Seth Greenberg, and I'll be in the building. So what are some early storylines that really stand out to you about the games coming up in Philly? 
you've got to give me your games here. I'm sitting here on my computer writing an article, so I don't have the brackets in front of me. Who do you have? We we have the 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 uh, top right bracket. You're killing me here. Now I got to go out, get out of my, my out of my 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 word my my word perfect or whatever you call these word processors here. I can do it right here. NCAA. Tournament. It, it, it's I'm the Indiana game. Back. Indiana. Well, and look, that that that's a Final Four game. Okay. That's a Final Four game. I mean, I said the Kentucky Indiana game is a Final Four game. And uh, the reality is, that's a Final Four game. And that's what my biggest problem with the selection committee was less with the selections and more with the seating. When you talk about Carolina, Indiana, and Kentucky, and only one can make it to the Elite Eight, all right, that's not seated correctly. You know, that, that, that's, to me, that is, that, 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 is a fi- that, that is the makings of a Final Four game. I mean, that's, I mean that, that's the level in which that that game you know will be you know and wouldn't it be a big bad idea if they reseed the tournament hmm. you know i mean i mean how, how about that idea why, why wouldn't you get to this point and reseed the tournament because you know uh, that would be fair to give the teams that have, have advanced uh you know a, a competitive advantage it would be impossible because of travel and other things like that but that would be that would be an, that would be an interesting way to go so you have North Carolina, Indiana, and Notre Dame and Wisconsin. So there is no way, in your opinion, that Notre Dame or Wisconsin get to the Final Four. Don't see it. Don't see it. Don't see it happening. They never. Uh, Mike Bray, hard to bet against. The dude is charmed. I mean, the dude is. He he coaches so with such a positive vein. It's it's almost in, amazing. But uh, now I, I, the winner of Carolina, Indiana is going to go to the Final Four. Well, Seth, we always appreciate a few minutes, and uh, the reason I kept on bringing up those Final Four matchups to you is because we once made a bet, and uh, I came out victorious in that Final Four bet, if you remember that a few years ago. I forget everything you say, Zach, like <laughs> most people. <laughs> Coach, thanks so much. You're the best. You're, you're the best, brother. Be good, man. Thank you.